Welcome to Reader Syndicate 3.0, the next evolution of the look into counterculture that is canon. My name is Matthew, owner of Riot Seeds, and this started as a one-man mission for strain history and breeding science. Over time, it's evolved into something bigger, better, and more of a team effort. We will be joined by members of the Can Illuminati and other friends throughout the seasons to hear their takes on grow techniques, breeding science, strain history, and more. Our mission is to combat the narrative that corporate cannabis and seed posers are obfuscating for their own financial benefit. Welcome to the underground. We are the Syndicate. Hey everyone, I just wanted to take a quick moment before we enter into this uh, awesome, awesome episode with more members from the Canada Command. I let you know our Blue Revolution is in stock. The Blueberry Ink Cross that we've been working on for five years now is finally at its, uh, what I feel is a great completion point for it. Uh, a true breeding line for blueberry scents and flavor. Um, it was our most popular selling line on the original release when we released the first Blue Bonnet Crosses. I didn't make a whole lot of them because I really wanted to explore what was in them before I did a major release. Uh, we were at that point. And it was uh, originally a DJ Short Blueberry from DJ Short's early, early work where he would sell the seeds at different talks that he would do across California at collectives. Uh, Buddy Resenlung picked up some packs. He gave them to me. I went through them and found the best representative of what I thought the most beautiful blueberry was like. But it didn't have the exact scent that I wanted when I saw that. In my mind's eye, and I was as I would look at it, I would picture beautiful blueberry jam, terps, and flavor and scent, just all of it. And they didn't have it. So we made a mission the last five years to make this a reality and something where you could pop a pack of seeds and it would be almost identical for that terp profile. We're there. They are now released on riotseeds.com. The pre order's over, they're already shipping out. We also have something called the Modern Blue um, that we didn't really release. We did it on our uh, Patreon, so definitely check that out. Our 50-tier Patreon ended up getting the lion's share of these with their monthly package. And it was the Mac Daddy cross to Blueberry in cross Mac Daddy from a company called Outhouse Genetics. And then my personal favorite out of the uh, hype strains as it were, that we are kind of uh, merging with some of this blue stuff so that we can bring it into the modern generation and get some of the new kids interested. The Sherb Cream Pie, phenomenally resinous, great hash maker, great yielding, nice long high for a Sherb cross, which is my biggest problem with Sherb, cross to our Blueberry Inn cross, and we call that one Blue Cocky. And um, yeah, triple entendre there. Uh, we have blues for me because it's blast for me to use something like runts for me, but the white runts out of all the runt stuff, I found to be the best runts cross with the most potent high. We did a blueberry in cross cross to that bringing heavy, heavy blueberry jam terps to the white runts. And we also have trop berry, which is the dosi trop, uh, tropic trop cherry, I believe cross to the dosi dose cross to the blueberry in cross. All of these are currently available on our site. Um, when they're sold out, they're sold out and that's it. Um, wanted to make sure you're all aware of that. And without any further ado, let's get into our show and welcome curbside and some of his homies from the cabin. Uh, so yeah. Fuck. What else have we got going on with the cabana? Any other future plans? That you can think of? I want to do lots of stuff with the cabana. I want to do, uh, I'm going to do these breeder boxes where I'm going to get, or I'm gonna call a, call you up one day and be like, "Hey yeah. Matt, I need you to donate a bunch of seeds." Amount of packs, yeah. And, and uh, I'm gonna get a bunch of people to donate seeds, and I'm gonna try and put together some packs that are like, you know, ten packs or twenty packs, or you know, given the supply that we can get. Sure. Uh, but then sell them uh, for like fifty bucks, a hundred bucks to uh members of the cabana yeah. that way 
good genetics are getting out there. They're at an affordable price. Um, I know That's these small. days I see a lot of people that don't want to spend money on genetics. Yeah. And um, that, that upsets me because I come from a place where like you pay to play. Yeah. And, like you support your homies, you buy, you buy things, man. And uh, yeah. people don't want to do that anymore. And even when they do, there's so many options that a thousand dollar pack of beans like 10 years ago, a lot of people, you know, there were, there were a lot of us that were interested in buying that oh, these sure. days, not, you know, so ain't happening. Captain. It's <laughs> no. not, not happening, you know? No. Uh, well, I mean, it, it's a clone culture now. I think there's a lot of FOMO of people thinking that they're going to go chase that one. This is an elite though, but they don't realize that elite was selected from two plants in some dude's closet. You know, it's just one person's opinion. And there's a lot of hype as opposed to a bunch of real smokers saying, like, I agree, you agree, we all agree. This is some fucking dang. It's a big difference now in that in that sense. It's artificial hype versus uh, a bunch of people agreeing that this was actually an elite. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't take much to be proven in an elite these days. You know no. what I mean? And Oh. It's, and there is a lot of good weed out there. I'm not hating on the weed at all. There's some good sure. weed out there, but uh, man, weed's not hitting like it used to. I can no, no. I mean, it can't. It's all cookies based, man. That shit has a 10 minute, 13 minute high, and and it's done. And I mean, no matter what you call it, cookie, sherb, lotto, it all ends in the same direction. It's all dead end breeding directions unless you outcross. And most of these people are crossing inwards and inbreeding cookies. And it hasn't done yeah. it hasn't done anything super beneficial for the breeding pool out there. No, it's I mean, unique. I, it's not unique. I mean, there's no. It's unique not unique, enough. and everything. Uh, you know, all these exotics super finicky. And the fact not, that they call this shit exotics blows my mind. Like when we used to think exotics, exotics, it would be like Nepalese or you know some wild Thai land race or you know what I mean or some Mexican you hadn't heard of. But exotics now means fucking normal shit you could buy from any Tom Dick Stanley on Instagram pushing some purple frosty shit related to cookies, in my opinion. It's just the trendy words that's being yeah. kicked around to like hype up certain strains. I mean, I think out of everything that came from from the cookies generation, from all that, you know, like obviously Skittles was an outlier. I remember when yeah, Skittles yeah, won, for sure. won the <laughs> most year, right? Right, yeah. but it's ug but it's ugly. And yeah. the first thing when it won that cup, you know, I remember um everybody was like, Oh, we're gonna just cross it to gelato or cookies or whatever to make it pretty. And right? then you're so reading again. So, so all this stuff is just like some percentage of gelato, some percentage of Skittles, some percentage of like the old cookie cuts, right? Yeah. And like like even Runts is basically just gelato S one or whatever yep. bag yep. speed, right? So, like, out of all that, <laughs> what are the keepers? Gelato 33, 41 will probably always have a place on the shelf, right? But yeah. all, all these poly hybrids of it, they're not really bringing anything bad new it's or different. the same thing. Yeah. Some of them are a little fruitier. Some of them are a little gassier. But it's like, the, it's just in there, you know? And at the end of the day, like, I've been out with homies in Cali, and we go and we smoke a bunch of joints. And the old 33 cut still cuts through everything else in flavor. So, like, yeah. everything else is just watered-down versions of that. And it's the same thing, like, now people want the original Skittles all of a sudden again. Like, we went back oh, yeah. to where we were seven years ago. Because you can't ago. keep the clone of that piece of shit. At least it yeah. does. Everybody lost it. Yeah, I've heard people just recently paying, like, 400 bucks an ounce for, for an ounce oh, yeah, of Skittles. Yeah. Well, and it just goes to show that right now, terps are king. Because no <laughs> grower... <laughs> is going to be like, oh, man, I want to grow Skittles. Fuck right. no. Yeah. Especially if they've grown real Skittles. Then they know they don't want to grow Skittles. Yeah. You know? yeah. So, but that's uh, the only thing I think new that came out of a lot of this, right? Yeah. Um, you know, yeah, the motor breath got crossed up to a bunch of stuff. A couple, But otherwise, like anybody that's doing new, anything interesting in breeding – has been like digging back into the, you know other things or like land races have been like you know everyone's saying and I think a lot of people are claiming land race crosses when they're not really that or you know oh, yeah. you could say, 
you could take any bag speed and be like, it was a land race. You yeah, know, right. I found, it, I found it on the ground at a show, so it must be a land race. Yeah, I got so, this in <laughs> Thailand from fucking Cookie Fam, and it's in their bag, so we got a Thailand race. But I, I do think we need to evolve from where we are right now. I mean, just just anecdotally, about a year ago, uh, in March of last year, I got to go to Morocco, and I toured a bunch of hash farms there. Oh, wow. And that was a super, super dope experience, right? Um and, and but even there as soon as i got there like i got these moroccan guys they're like do you have the roots you know yeah. <laughs> and, and, and i'm like oh, of course bro they're and, growing, and they're not they're growing modern you know? lines in morocco now. <laughs> like, like, dna started doing all the 90s like in the day well, well, i could i could tell you the whole dna story i got the inside scoop on what they did oh, there when i was there here, here. but but well i'll just say first um, you know, in the last five years, the American genetics have really blown up there, like everywhere, right? Spain, Europe, you know, people want to grow all the American cuts now. The Dutch shit has been over. Um, but what happened in Morocco, nobody's grown land race stuff. Yeah. And so everyone started getting all these new problems like fusarium, uh, oh, sure. latent, powdery mildew, because the strains they've been growing for the last like thousand years are acclimated to their soil, to their climate. And now they're having like, like they're like, I don't know why I'm getting this like stem rot. They're like they're, they're getting all this fusarium, like losing whole plants that would be like multi-pound plants, you know. So um, from what I understand with DNA, what happened there was, was uh, you know, through through Crockett and those guys when the tangy really blew up. They went yeah. there and a lot of Moroccan farmers are pretty rudimentary. And it goes back to those orange citrus terps like that really represents really well there and cut yeah. through in the hash. So everybody <coughs> like, just went crazy for tangy terps down there and like bombed Europe with tangy hash. Yeah. And, and the farmers were really su successful from it, right? Um, but then in subsequent years, DNA went back there and tried to sell like tangy F2s or whatever the, oh, yeah, the yeah. follow-up lines of, and they couldn't find that same percentage of like that tangy orange pheno in there yeah. and a lot of the hash they were producing was like bunk and you had like dirt dirt poor moroccan farmers in the mountains that couldn't sell their hash that like couldn't feed their kids end up committing suicide like like yeah. people want people wanted to rip their heads off there because yeah, they there's just really basically, real world real world shit happened yeah Come they on. just went there and sold like millions of seeds and just profiteering and just didn't give a fuck about the farmers or the people at the end of the day you or know, destroying the land races that were there. Yeah, which unfortunately, unless you go really deep in the mountains, like um, it, it's nobody's really grown. None of the younger yeah, guys there. Yeah, you'd have to be so lucky. Yeah, I saw, I saw gushers. I saw, you know, I saw all the breeders <laughs> that we've been talking about today. Yeah, uh, yeah. you know, cookies, <laughs> Colorado, you Blanco, know how disappointed uh, I would be if I pulled up to Morocco and they're like, "Look at my field of gushers." Yeah, right? <laughs> yeah. Oh, bro. Yeah. yeah. It was it was disappointing for me because I, I, yeah, I mean, also, I mean, when I was 14, I got to spend the summer, uh, summer in Spain. And I was smoking hash there and uh, it was all Moroccan hash and it all had that like, you know, church incense, like really ethnic kind of unique flavor that mm. is rare, you yeah. know, like this turf profile that just doesn't really exist anymore, you know? So everything now is like, it's just a faint version <laughs> Uh, of all the cookies, gelato, you know, Skittle stuff we were just talking about, or they're going citrus because, like, you can't really lose with citrus terps and hash. Yeah. And, and that's all that they're producing anymore, you know, and it's all, like, Italian and French, like, mafia guys controlling it down there. The Moroccan farmers are just, like, dirt poor trying to get their hands on seed. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a crazy scene. It's interesting. I have, I have this conversation with a lot of the, the kids that have been maybe coming in the last 10 years and wanting to really get into land races and trying to explain to them, dude, like, you're going to have a really hard time. Um, not only because you, they don't necessarily know what the land races would look like as, as much as I wouldn't, because I've never been over there. But I do know who has been over there and how often they sell seeds and the amount of seeds that they sell over there each year in Morocco and how those get distributed to Afghanistan and all the other places. And trying to explain to them, probably you're a little bit late to the party to be able to discern what's over there. And they just absolutely hate hearing that. Like, it's like, you have just, 
you're wrong. You don't know what you're talking about. And it's like, no, really, this is what's happened over there. And it's unfortunate, but you, yeah. but we all miss the boat. Like essentially. Yeah. yeah. It's a bummer. Yeah, you, you really have to get tied in with the right people to find something that's really been preserved. And, you know, people have asked me, like, I, I got some, some buddies in Greece that have been able to, you know, link with like an old legendary grower in the mountains there. And they've been able to collect five land race Greek genetics, including the famous Kalamata red. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and they've had it genetically tested with like the whole phylos or whatever it is, medicinal genomics galaxy. Yeah, I trust total... medicinal genomics over phylos for sure. So yeah. yeah, well, I think it's the same company now. They they one became the next oh, one. No, right? that's so um, horrible. <laughs> but uh, but basically, it's a genetic outlier. It's unique. And you know, they've asked me like, what should we do with the seeds? And they want to outcross it to cookies and all these. And I'm like, I'm like, the first thing you do if you get a hold of seeds from somewhere where it's not legal yet that you know where land race is like just do a huge f2 preservation yeah run. yeah do a big open like, pollination of that shit open pollinate make like a thousands more of those seeds and give them out to people so that shit's out there you know if you even if you're trying to like protect it and not let it completely get out there you still got to give it to some homies and trust it because like because well, so many things have been lost over the years because it's still illegal it's really in most really of the world shit here you know, yeah. Care and do it right. Do you know if the the real seed co? I know they sell a Kalamata red from Greece. I wonder if that's sourced from them. I don't know. I'm not yeah, sure. Like, no, because I have some here, but like, you know, they're expensive as fuck, even on the real seed co. But like, has, to get like old heirloom Greek seeds would be really fucking cool. So I rolled the dice, but I haven't popped them because I just don't know. From from what I understand about it is like it actually has a really awesome unique chirp profile. Um, it has like really nice colors that, ex that express from it, but it's just you know old school spear shaped fluffy buds, not the yeah. the flower density that the market wants. You Fuck know that's market, why people yeah. wanted to outcross it basically. Yeah, I've crossed so, this to cookies. The first thing that that just bastardizes <laughs> it. Yeah, a dead end breeding. Yeah. You know, uh, <clears throat> Yeah, it needs something so, like old Sensi hash plant or old Afghani one or something like that. You know what I mean? Uh, to bring yeah. in some of that and keep the diversity without bastardizing it with uh, a polyhybrid yeah, fucking mess. That's not going to really dominate the turf profile. That's going to exactly. let that turf profile express itself. But that's the that's the problem with a lot of these land races when they were bred for just outdoor growing. We bring them inside; they're going to have longer flower times, and everybody, all these yeah. commercial facilities chop it eight weeks so that's just the weed that we have now you know and it's gonna herm so. a lot of it's gonna herm like bringing outdoor to in usually has herm issues at, at the jump and you have to acclimate it select do all this shit and a lot of people don't want to put in the time because it's got to be bang 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 something new each month you need a new drop each month of 100 strains to keep your bullshit going you know yeah it's yeah. a different scene bro different scene Braiding's, the art of braiding's really kind of uh, been lost. Like me and CSI talk about it a lot. Like when releasing new lines, like if we put these out to be tested, if we take the time to test these seeds now, what does that mean? Because other people are going to be releasing six different drops and they're going to see we're releasing this and working on it and just say they have it, release it. And then while we're over here testing it and doing the real work, it's already been done. Like the yeah. the the idea of it's been out there and done. So now what we've done, even though it's real, is no longer relevant. Yeah. It's it's a real bad kind of black hole getting worse and worse and worse. The the seed companies have really painted themselves into a corner with this yeah. no testing shit. And, yeah, uh, yeah. It's uh, that's I think that's one of the biggest downfalls to seeds these days is there's a lot of greed in it and it's so much the rush to the market, the rush to be first, the rush to beat everybody as opposed to taking the time to do something properly and right is uh, painfully apparent with the offerings that are available out on the market these days. But uh, there's a few people I, I'm, I'm interested to know. I want to know who everybody's favorite breeders are these days. 
Right. Yeah, let, let's let's go around. Uh, Oki, where are you at? Um, I would have to say Bloom right now. I mean, we had uh, real good luck with uh, the. I love uh, Harry. Yeah, we just ran the uh, Candy Fumes. Uh, we have another Fino of uh, Black Maple that we really like. Um, so I think, uh, yeah, he'd probably be my favorite right now. How about you, Chris? Man, that's hard to say. I was going to say Bloomco probably too, because he's kind of a homie and, uh, you know, um, I've gr grown a lot of his stuff over the last couple of years, but, um, you know, it's hard to say because, uh, um, nothing has been too impressive to me lately that i've had to grow up now i deal with a lot of commercial facilities so you know i'm not um i'm not in the super heady world right now unfortunately yeah but um nothing really punches through for me you know so yeah. um yeah i'm i'm uh uh bloom co i guess by default right now i'm gonna stack all you motherfuckers down all right Kurt, what do you got <laughs> Man, uh, Bloomco. No, just I, <laughs> no. I love Bloomco. He, uh, Harry's dude. He's just such. Yeah, a I mean, yeah. He does. He does yeah. amazing work. That's like, of course, boom, Bloomco. But then, uh, I just like seeds that I've bought personally lately. Like, I just got uh, some stuff from people under the stairs. I really like everything that he's doing with his sour stuff he preserved a lot of um old school res dog shit that was okay. fire and yeah. um like a sour saunders and stuff and uh, he's another dude boom on the cabana like uh get him um the relentless stuff all the rotten stuff and pretty much everything that i've seen from him i actually don't have any relentless gear, but everything that I've seen from him is super fire. Yeah, same. Um, I just got a bunch of stuff from Shaw Bud. Oh, um, Shaw, fucking. After, literally, after. Breeder's breeder. Yeah, after your podcast with him, um, I was trying to get some cat piss seeds. I even hit you up. I was like, man, yeah, yeah, I'm yeah. on his site. It's not letting me order. What's going on? That's what can right, I do? Right, yeah. And, um, I ordered them and then uh, he intercepted my order before it came out to me and super hooked it up. Bro. Oh, fuck so yeah. 10 packs turned into 100 packs. Yeah, and, Shaw's uh, amazing, bro. Yeah, so uh, I'm going to do a big cat piss project because um, yeah. he sent me a bunch of cat piss beans and cat piss is personal favorite of mine. So That's right. Um, and the NorCal and the SoCal cat pisses and every other um, piss variety that I've come across is not what I've been looking for. Uh, was it yeah. wasn't the NorCal one that was like a squatty indica, right? That's and it was like nice. that, like that wasn't the one. You know, I know what Curb's talking about. That like two thousand like straight like litter box in the jar I almost had a little sweetness to it also to it i will say the socal cat piss came from paradise seeds mod tk1 it was a huge scammer so i'm really interested to see how his fake san diego cat piss turns out i would Bunk save yourself real. the time um yeah i've already grown some san diego cat piss back in the day and, and it's not it it ain't our san not, diego cat piss from back in the day it's not it so i'm really after hearing Shaw talk about the cat piss, yeah, he <clears throat> he actually had me hyped. Like, oh man, he might have been smoking what I want, what I yeah, want to yeah. be smoking. You I know? truly hope it is, dude. And uh, so yeah, I'm gonna try uh, do that. But I've been getting the like when I do a seed hunt, I buy beans. I I get the beans from everybody. Like so, if I'm doing a sour diesel hunt, I get sour diesel from everywhere that i can get sour diesel sure. from sure. and see what's up so i got a bunch of <clears throat> get some sour diesel from csi dude some of the best i already got it good it's, dude good inspect this sent some so Fire. and i didn't even uh he asked me what i wanted and i was like bro you got too much stuff bro just yeah 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 dealer's choice like 
you know, yeah. I'm old school. OG's oh, Kevin Sowers. Like, I know you got it. So whatever. And he sent me a bunch of TK stuff, a bunch of Kim stuff. And yeah. man, he does cool things that I really like. Um, yeah. Like he'll do a Chem D times Chem 91, and then he'll do Chem 91 times Chem D. He exactly. reverses the reversals. And that's that's a real thing. I, even though it's the same genetics, the pollen's going to take differently. Plants reverse differently. And the genetics align differently. Yep. It, it, like exactly. And I love being able to grow things side by side like that and see exactly what's up so he and he sent me some big bad wolf and some big bad wolf too which is just yeah, there's, there's just that the there. reversal and then yep. i got some old chem d chem 91 from canarado perfect um, and it's like I, stuff like that it's like i want to pop all of that together so yeah, i can dude. see you know what's what you know and um so I like Inspecta a lot, Shaw Bud. Um, you know, people who I think uh, are doing just like really good things for seeds and culture in general are like the doctor. I like his podcast. I like. Uh, yeah, Fletch is a man, dude. I, yeah, I do. I me and him butt head sometimes, but I love Fletch, like, from a real honest, like, breeding perspective and, and how passionate is he, is he is about collecting and history. I got a yeah. lot of love for that dude. I do. We, we've we had uh, our issues as well, too, and, like, with the <laughs> cabana, I hit him up, and I was like, look, bro, man, you're a huge part of the cabana. You're OG on here, and yeah, uh, dude. I got to have you on here, like, anything – any differences that we may or may not have, let's just put them aside. And he hits me back and he's like, yeah, we don't really have that many differences, bro. It's like yeah. one, one little thing, one little issue that like spawned out and what, so, and we see, we've seen each other, uh, you know, yeah, a hundred times over the years. There's never any issues. It's always all, all love and at events and everything, man. It's the other good thing about <clears throat> the old school events is, you really got to know people, man, because there was right. kind of like a circuit of people. Like we were all doing the events, we all had the booths, we all like, you know, we're going out to eat afterwards and everything. And I miss those. So I want to have some cabana events. I, yeah, dude. I know. Uh, I, I missed last weekend. I'm sorry, Chris. I was supposed to be at Canacon in Oklahoma with Chris, and I flaked up. it. I flaked on him, Fucked but. Up. We're gonna do some events uh, at the Hort at the Hort Grow booths. We'll, we're gonna share some booths and uh, be around, always yeah, need, working together and stuff. I need a curb there with me to clown on all the new no name breeders. <laughs> and when we do our Can Illuminati events, dude, I'll have you guys all invited out. I know it's far, California's far, but you guys are all welcome. You got to be careful who you even hate on these days, man, because I'm, <laughs> I'm, I'm a hater by, uh, <laughs> by yeah. heart. I just naturally go to hate. You know, but, over like, the years, you know, some bro, of these guys are putting in work just because I'm old <laughs> and I don't know. I feel the same way, dude. Not, yeah, I understand. I, know. Doing it, you know? I agree. I agree. I'm just clowning over here. But, you know, I mean, I feel like even in the old, old days, like we always had a breeder or somebody that was like the butt of the jokes, right? Like back like in the swerve. day, me, yeah. like, <laughs> yeah, swerve, like me and Red Dog were at each other's throats all uh, the time for dog? like a yeah, year yeah. and a half, you yeah, know, uh, or like it was cool to make fun of sub cool, you know? Yeah. Well, and, that was easy to do. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, but you know, every, like, I mean, even a broken clock is r right twice a day. Right. Yeah. And uh, and sometimes you got to give the plants credit and what they're capable of over the humans that just interacted with them because this plant just has this amazing ability to you know produce these terp profiles. So like sometimes a breeder that's just even fumbling around will stumble across something that's fire, and of course they're gonna you know adhere it to their ego and and make it about them. But it's like the plant has that ability sometimes to like just you find a diamond in the rough and, and, and that's nothing against any of the new breeders, but like, sure. you know, 
you can get really lucky when you're working with good parent genetics, you know, yeah. like the example I've always given is like, if both your, your parents are, are a professional tennis player, you're probably going to be pretty good at tennis. Exactly. Right? So like, yeah. like we had, we had to work with just like, you know, in the, in the early days, like we were just working with Dutch genetics and whatever, like, you know, Mexican Absolutely. bag seed we could find. And we had to dig harder. <laughs> it, was, it was more work to find something like truly noteworthy and memorable. And, uh, you know, and now it's like, there's so much out there between other people's seeds clone only genetic like you can just grab something and start crossing and playing around and stumble across something maybe not unique but but definitely fire you know definitely so, a big shot at finding hplv if you're playing with fucking clones nowadays you know what i mean that too. just the availability yeah. of everything too like yeah. back in the day there was three or four seed websites that were actually like legit that i trusted that yeah i would order from now there's a new one every week man yeah and dude. everybody's got a horror story from Something. you know a uh, dealing that they've had with a seed vendor and all of that and Absolutely. it's just become such a uh a, a shitty business man but i want uh i want the seed vendors to know that i'm i'm trying to I want to have exclusive stuff at the cabana. I want to hook the community up. I want to give good prices. I want to give the vendors good prices too. I'm not, I'll, uh, I'll work with you on vendor pricing. I want to make it worthwhile for everybody to stock their gear at the cabana. So get ready for the store. I really want people to be hyped to be able to find rare stuff and new stuff that, it, you know, all of these seed sites, man, they got the same stuff too. They might be yeah. in stock, they might be out of stock, but it's all the same stuff. And I want to have different things. I promise that if you're on the cabana, you will find different clones that you won't find anywhere that you might actually, someone might actually share them with you. You know, and I know and our guys will all be a part of it, dude. All, all our whole crew, high and lonesome, all of us will be there. Yeah, and we're trying to. I'm. I'm going to give, I got tons of seeds that I've made over the years. I'm going to give seeds away to everybody who, um, you complete a grow log, boom, I'll send you a pack of seeds. Yeah, that's what's you know, up, dude. If you uh, can refer some people, you want to get three people referred and they make their little intro and say, so-and-so referred me, boom, I'll send you a pack of seeds for all the referrals. Um I just, I really want people to get up there and start, start posting your process, you know, tell me what nutrients yeah. you use, post some pics of, you know, let's get these grow logs going. I want to bring the forums back. So I got, we all do that needs community involvement. And, um, the more the communities involved, the more the breeders and, um, the people behind the scenes, I can get them involved. And bring some people out of the shadows. Um, you know, P there's a lot of people who support the cabana that aren't on there right now, but like yeah. Bodie, he loves the cabana. He, he oh, yeah, yeah, on there a lot. That's he's a busy man, friend. he's not really Absolutely. on a lot of social media these days, but I've like already talked to him. Like, you know, he's down for he's down with the cabana. He's we, we just got a lot of old school guys, man. Like I said, I had breakfast with Katsu the other day. He's doing some cool new projects. He's out in Oklahoma with me now. Um, you know, uh, just quickly speaking of TGA, the sub cool, I think people are going to fucking shit their pants when they find out who owns TGA and what's coming out soon. Right now. Know. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's there's gonna be a resurgence of some TGA coming out soon, and it ain't no sub. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Leave a little, drop a little dime there, a little sneaky hint. <laughs> I'm also old school too, where if I don't like you, I don't care if you got the best weed in the world. I'm not gonna buy your seeds. I'm not gonna. Yeah, dude. If someone's a, I'm not gonna. If someone's snitched on friends, know. if someone's done anything like that, snitch. I will not support them. I truly yeah, believe sure. bad juju yeah. passes on, bro. I really do. And For I sure. I don't want good money going to bad people. There's enough good people in the industry doing good work to not have to fuck with that. You know, like when you when totally. you talk about breeders, like 
uh, without including myself, so I don't sound like an egotistical bastard, CSI to me is heads and tails above doing it better than me, doing it better than anyone I know. Um, High and Lonesome. Like, I, yeah, I don't know if you guys remember High and Lonesome from back in the day. Oh, of course. Poodle Nuts, Appalachia, fucking Fuck all yeah. this shit. He, I he's love, one of my best I love friends. that Poodle Nuts cut. I rock oh, that. Dude. And, and actually, best. some of the some of the best weed I ever had was uh, Canarada just just handed me uh, some Percy seeds he made that were like a uh, fire OG BX to to the poodle nuts cut, Ooh. and it was like straight that dog waltz terps, but yeah. with with hard nice OG golf balls. Because oh, that was yeah. the problem with that poodle nuts cut; it grew like a almost like a deep chunk. It was like nothing. Oh yeah, yeah. it was like Urkel, like a bush fucking yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, with this little nugget in the middle of all these leaves, you know. Yeah, yeah. And uh, but that was like some of the most fire weed. I was like, like I wish I still, I would have kept my mama that because that was. Little like, nuts is still around. We got it back in the circle, so yeah. Yeah, great cut. Around. Come on. Come across that to an OG and find that you know that like that with the poodle nuts terps, but with yield. Yeah, we can do that. Yeah. Um, yeah, High and Lonesome is one of my other favorite breeders, and and not just because of his breeding, but like as a human, he's made me be a better human uh, as as we become friends. Like he has a, a moral code that like really is almost second to none as far as like how you treat people, how you treat your customers, how you hold yourself as a man. Those are the kind of people I like meeting, you know. And and you know what? In our first uh, uh, Can of Cavana episode getting to speak to Howie and uh, D man and Skitty. Like I was intimidated by Optimus prime, bro. Like I was kind of scared to talk to that dude and getting to talk to him one-on-one. He is one of the coolest motherfuckers there are, you know, same with D man, like all those dudes. I, th- I think it was a great, it was great for a lot of us that have even been around for a long time, that have never really had a lot of dealings with them because I was always kind of intimidated to, to really break that ice, dude. And there are some really, really cool down to earth old school dudes that, that, that made a change in our, in our scene. Man. And I didn't get a really touch on it too much, but like what Howie did with the cabana and not, re- not even as much with the cabana, but what he did with the community from the cabana, like, it really was it was like an, it was an honor and it was it it felt cool like we were young man so yeah, yeah. it was special uh, it, it was it was special and when mm-hmm. you know to meet the old timers and some of the people that we met over there you know skoosh ncga you oh know. i love ncga he's my he gave me my first booth at, at emerald cup he was the first old school dude that was like you know what i know everybody hates your ass but i'm gonna bring you to my booth yeah you know yeah. i think matt that was the first time i met you was when you had that booth because yeah, Al- Al- alaska alaska elliott was over there and he was like you know introduced me to ncga and i saw yeah. he had a booth chair with you guys i was like what 2015 emerald cup yeah 2014? yeah yeah, yeah. When I was like super, that. super fat, sitting there all fucking squat. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I remember that. That was uh, yeah, that was dude. a good year for the Emerald Cup. But I, it was the I, last I think, best year. I think you actually may have chewed me out because I went back there to kick it behind the booth, and you're like, "Who the fuck's this guy?" And I'm like, oh, "I'm friends with the friends. It's the guy." <laughs> the- <laughs> was it Baked Alaska you're with? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. I remember. <laughs> it was this tiny little. I remember booth. kicking you out of the booth. Yeah, yeah, there was like 20 people, 20 people in a four foot space. Because, like, NCGA, if you know him, he's like 10% Ron. So, what yeah. he had told me is like, yeah, just give me 10% of your sales and you'll share a booth. And I was like, cool. And I get back there and there are six other people he's sharing this four by four booth. <laughs> yeah. like, oh, no. And I just basically sat up there. They had clones behind me. So, everybody thought I was selling clones of my gear. And I'm like, oh, I'm just the seed guy. And like, I want your fucking seeds. Give us some of those clones back there, you know? Yeah, was, <laughs> I love Ron, though. Just but, even give me a shot and, and take a chance on me. Was that crap. was one of the best parts about Howie and Skitty is because it, it gave us the automatic intro to, like, the old timers. Yeah. And outside of Howie, bro, like, if you were an old timer, you didn't really 
fuck with the younger generation. No, no, like, yeah. There was sure. no reason for yeah. you to. Like, yeah. You, didn't want yeah. any, you weren't trying to deal with any kids. But uh, how we always, man, man, here's, here's my mom room. Take whatever you want. I would go over there anytime, you know, I had a project going on or something and I needed – new moms or something i'd go over to howie's and see what he had because i knew he was going to have something new and yeah. uh it was nice to it was it's kind of weird you don't realize how spoiled you are until you no, hear you the never struggles do. that like yeah. other people go through and you're like oh wow yeah i never had I, to deal with that shit <laughs> i went through that shit too like being in socal with the hogs breath crew I was fed shit early on, like the Pure Kush when it came out, Fire OG, all that shit is clones right when it dropped, dude. Or Ken, one of the first people with Chem D in California. I was just there, fuck it, you know? And then later on, you realize how many people just didn't have it and how early you had it. Yeah, and how yeah. many people sure. wanted it and, like, how, yeah. like, you just, you don't appreciate things because, and I'm guilty of this because, like, yeah, same. I've had so many dope things that I wish, damn, I wish I had this back. And oh yeah, the LA. Just app thinking back on like just old school cuts from like our little crew, like yeah, Southern Charm from Still Too Big, like a abusive great cut. OG, whatever happened yeah. to the abusive OG? Supposedly, some so people fun. are floating that one around again. I don't know. I'm skeptical when I hear that people got abusive OG again, but I'd like to see it if it is. Shoreline's back around, though. The old Shoreline cuts back around. I just yeah. heard that. Still cool. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, the chems, I think, always kind of stayed around. I mean, yeah. you know, that was, that was, uh, the chem you know, stayed around, but we all rocked Chem Four pretty, pretty Yeah, hard. we did. Yeah, Chem Four yeah. was the I know. Okay, the shit out of that. The, I, I think I ran more. nothing. I think I ran now. nothing but Cam Four for a long time. Yeah, you guys ever get to run? They ran the D too. I've never ran Cam One. I I saw uh, Inspectors doing some work with it and yeah, has I it, did so some. I'd it's, be interested to see what that's all about. What's it? Very, what's the closest comparison to Super Silver Fucking Haze, bro? What NL Five? It's an NL Five Haze dominant <sighs> cut, and that's when well, we were able to realize, okay, motherfucker. Now we know Chem 4 wasn't just a bag seat of the same thing. This yeah. is obviously an NL5 haze cut that's almost all mercine. And it's it's mm. very obvious and had a lot of, yeah, just a little tea lean and terpinaline in there. It's a little, you know what I mean? Like, it's got all the traits of NL5 haze, and it's very strong. Very strong. Breeds true, breeds true for 5% plus terpenes, though, for uh, mercine, which mm. is, is special in its own right. Yeah. 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 Uh, see, and it's like only somebody like Inspector could come up with Chem One. Yeah. Because <laughs> like, he kept it ever since Joe Brand gave it to him. You know? You know, like, you don't let go of nothing. Yeah. I uh I mean, there was a point where I probably had eighty moms in my uh I bet, yeah. In my basement, in my little condo, and I remember uh, I, my neighbors called and snitched me out, and I ended up getting oh raided. And uh, of course, I called like all the Cabana guys. I was like, "Man, yeah. everybody, come to my house. We got to break everything down right now." Come get your cops. cops gave boys. me forty-eight hours before they came back, and uh, so I remember everybody was over there. I think you know, I, it was I a free for all, bro. It was a free for all, and uh, that was one of those things where I I had caregiver cards from yeah uh, oh yeah from each person yeah yeah from patients man so cops showed up and they were just so confused they're like is I don't yeah, they know don't know what to do legal, is this legal or illegal like, yeah, like they yeah. didn't want to mess with nothing <clears throat> but they knew uh, they ended up getting me on building violations because I didn't oh, pull permits you. to do like my electrical upgrades and. Things like that, man. So, hey, did any down. of you guys ever come across Free For All the Clone? No, I've never even heard of it. No, I never grew it. That was uh, Mr. Nice. Oh, was it on Mr. Nice that FFA was being passed around? Yeah, I think they were that, the ones who sourced it. I was confusing it with Cabana because it was uh, a um, mass super skunk crossed to something, and I can't even remember what the second part was. Maybe Woody Kush or something weird. I always, I always thought it was Cabana, but maybe it was Mr. Nice or FFA was, but but it was funny so. because it was called free for all because it's supposed to be free. For 
for everyone to grow, and it got immediately locked. You yeah. know, one of those situations. Chris had probably the best sour diesel cut of all of us. He had the East Coast. For sure. Where'd you, which, where'd you which, source which that you ECSD, Chris? That was the one I gave to Harry Palms that he used in all his sour crosses for, for Bloom Co. for everything. Did you source you know? it? So I had originally, when I first got to Denver in 2009, I got it at uh, Cam from Anna C. Was it the Chaco cut or so, ECSD Chaco? Was it that one? No, honestly, I think it was a Fino from Rez's uh, Sour D uh, okay. 3.0s, which um, was pretty representative. I mean, you know, over the years, I, I grew the hell out of that cut. I felt like I perfected it. And um, <coughs> people, pass, people pass me the AJ cut. People pass me some like Fish Tour ECSD cut. People pass yeah. me like four or five other sour diesels and nothing stood up to this one. So, you know, once again, I'm not going to like, you know, based on the breeder or, or whatever, but it, like that, that shit was the truth. That was a really fire sour diesel cut. Yeah, dude, it can happen. So, you know, like I said, Harry, Harry Palms has been breeding with it. And, um, you know, I passed that to a lot of people. There's one um, that came out of Colorado. I, maybe not out of Colorado, but was passed by, you guys know, Stacy J. Mirror, yeah, yeah, yeah. Of course, he was the one who passed it to. Uh, it, it made its way to Caleb, and that's the one the CSI uses today. That's sour. That one's fucking dang, 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 dang. Mirror used to come to a bunch of Cabana gatherings. He's a great dude. I I need to get him on the show sometime. We've been talking about it forever, but that dude's got a history going back to the '77 crew and all of it, dude. He's something else. Yeah, and uh, you know he runs the overgrow reunion page on facebook yeah he so, does yeah like, he, he knows all the old school guys man yeah dude He's a legit motherfucker I really yeah. really really uh respect that dude i saw now th this is another cool thing about the cabana maybe you know differently matt and i was just mistaken but uh knucklehead just posted up that he spoke to loran the other day and he's cancer free and I was under the impression that Loran had passed away in Same. December. Yeah. But no, Loran is alive and well. well that's and fucking rad. Yeah. You know, that's good news. That's great news. That is news. good news. And that's the type of things that you can just randomly learn over on the cabana, you know? I remember. Because uh, we got all the old guys who actually talk to Loran still. You know? Yeah, you know, I remember uh, Chimera posted at one point that tom hill had died killed himself and i remember eulogizing tom hill and shit and then here he is popping up again later on <laughs> and i'm like oh my god I'm is it is he in like columbia or something now oh no he's 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 up north in california he's being tom hill is always <laughs> as tommy as he gets he's gonna be watching this i guarantee he's always in the chat rooms under the name j cash shout out tom big daddy tom I love I loved the uh, ten pound uh, plant threads from back in the day. Those were uh, a real yeah. inspiration for me. Oh yeah, that dude. one that one specific thread that in the Tom Hill forum, like that ten pound yeah. plant outdoor thread. But I, yeah. I had like this a wealth of knowledge, like like probably a third of what I've learned total about outdoor growing came from that. That's for sure. Awesome. Tom Hill Hayes times everything, man. I, yeah. I'd support. I, I'd hit that to everything. Yeah. yeah, dude. And, and he just recently did a repro or had someone do a repro of the Tom Hill say. So there's more of it back out there. I don't know how good the selection is. but yeah. yeah. That's the hard part when people try and bring back the old school genetics. Like, man, mother, you know, parental stock is different. And all of that. I don't know. I feel something about old school seeds. I don't know. Climate change or something. They were better back in the day. I mean, Phil, Phil's, he did a big pop of it, right? To pick, pick the one that he did. I'm sure he did. I couldn't tell you the exact. He had a really it. good selection. And in Tom Hill's haze, as much as I love Tom Hill, that shit was grass, carrots, and hay. 99% of it that I mm. saw. Oh, hundred percent of what I saw, but I know there's good shit in there. Cause I've seen other people come across it. And uh, what I saw come from Tuskegee shit was fire, absolute fire. So I think he did a good job. Hayes is one of those things that you got to do uh, 
bigger numbers in, man. Ten pack labor of isn't, love, isn't gonna do uh, UNF yeah, I mean, justice for it. He had said it back then. I mean, that's why he only had like a couple genetics as a breeder, you know, on a IC mag. That those were all preservation runs. He wasn't like, you know, he wasn't trying to breed for any specific Absolutely. traits. He was just like, here's the whole hodgepodge of Hayes DNA smashed together for you to keep smashing together and keep finding things for eternity, you know? So that's really what he did. So it's all locked and hidden in there. It's not going to be like a 10 pack of from any other breeder where you might find a winner in 10 or 20 feet. Yeah. He was know? always really so, open that it would be like 10% keepers, 90% move. And, and for a long time he sold them cheap or even that you'd even get oh, them yeah. a, a freebies on seed bay. And like, you'd be like, Oh, and more hay seeds. I'll never grow these. <laughs> right. you know? And then, and now everybody wants them. It's funny how everything like goes around in circles like that. Even worse was the Sam the Skunk Man Ty Skunk Haze, dude. How many people got 90,000 packs of those? Yeah, I think I still have some of those somewhere. The Thunk or whatever yeah. it's called? Yeah. I ran some Reefer Man original Haze, and that shit went for like 17 weeks. Bro. Fucking yeah. Reefer Man, bro. Yeah, it does. <laughs> Doesn't even start shooting pistols till like week five or something. Yeah, he's like, something just, that's the other thing, man. So many breeders like you get their gear and then they end up doing something, and you feel like you feel like uh, you're on the Epstein list or something because you got a pack. <laughs> oh, of he beer. definitely got. He definitely <laughs> yeah. got on that list, bro. He he uh, he split up me and Neville. Me and Neville were doing a project, and for me that was like. A once in a lifetime thing to be able to work with Neville, the guy who started it all, right? And yep. uh, Reefer Man was playing real cool with me and having Neville like source stuff for me, making promises like, "Oh yeah, if you get this from him, I'll send this." And I was like, "Dude, he has a bad rep. I ain't sending him shit." And Ned's like, "I got it, man. If he fucks you, I'll, I'll cover it." And then Reefer Man slowly started telling Neville, "Yeah, if you work with Matt, you're gonna look poor. You're gonna look like a poor person because he, he's not he's not like not well loved." Sure enough, split it down the middle. Me and Neville never finished the projects in the end. He used some of the stuff, but we didn't do it together, you know, past that six months. And then Reefer Man ripped him off and bailed. You know, it's just like one of those things where it just, I could, can't change their stripes. But there was some good shit in some of his shit. You know, like the, the, uh, the Butterscotch Hawaiian had some killer shit in it. But then I find out that was made by Scabby from White Buffalo. You know what I mean? wild smoke and mirrors everywhere what do you feel about how you feel about people white labeling white labeling seeds you know i've done it for (laughs) you know like that's when when me and karma were friends i would i would make seeds for them let them white label them um i think it's a necessity for some breeders now and an only way for good breeders to make some money um i do have issues with the people who take those white label seeds and pretend to breed them and pretend that they're doing something they're not. I don't really have a lot of respect for that. I do realize that it's an important part of the industry and it's always going to be there. But, you know, like walking around wearing lab coats, pretending you're doing all this selection and pictures and stuff, and then going and buying your CD and selling. Like, I don't have a ton of respect for it, but I realize it's a necessary evil, you know, in, in other ways. I don't fault the breeders who do it. Like, Ghost they do it for the rap. Yeah. Exactly. I mean, it's always going to be there, and I've done it. I, like I'm <laughs> just guilty of coach breeding for other people so that they could get like this great reputation of being breeders, like Karma. You know, it's just how it goes. Normally, I wouldn't even say their name. You know, <laughs> there's plenty more. But it is what it is. It's just the it's something business. that most people don't know about. Most people don't know about it, and. and don't understand how often it happens and it just is part of the game who who do you think are the best seed vendors these days vendors or breeders vendors um there's there's only a few that i think really go for the the idea of of quality over quantity like there there are people that i i like as humans that run seed banks like i like james bean as a human I hate about 90% of the people he carries because I know for a fact they're frauds. Um, 
And, you know, and like he pushes that whole thing where it's like, yeah, I, I vouch for everybody, you know, shit like that bothers me. Um, you know, there's there's good companies in Australia called Girt by Seeds is a good one. There's one here called Lifted Genetics that really goes out of their way to make sure everybody they carry actually breeds, does hard work, all that stuff. But it's few and far between. It's so few and far between of anybody who even knows what they're carrying. Most of the guys that have seed banks don't know shit about the genetics they're selling or, or the people doing the quote-unquote work. Yeah, It's hard. It's hard, and that's why I think what you're going to do is going to be super fucking important. Super fucking important. I think people like having access to things that are smaller projects you know they're yeah. not meant for the masses they're gonna they're meant for they're meant for cabana members you know yeah. i have no but, respect for the attitude anything like that it's just a, another market for frauds to help frauds push their shit it's seed resellers remarketing shit that isn't what they say it is that they're buying in bulk repackaging under their I'm different always games. literally just i Sometimes I'll check out the attitude just for shits and giggles and the list of breeders that I see on there. And I'm always shocked at who I see on there. And I'm always shocked at like, who the fuck is this dude? Like, yeah. I have no idea who 80% of the breeders on the attitude are these days. You know? Yeah, there's, you know, I, there was a company called Best Coast Genetics I was looking at the other day and having to giggle at because they were selling Ms. Jill stuff. They were selling all these fake versions of everything. They had a picture of uh, what was it they were saying it was? Chem 91, and you go look at it, and it's straight cookies, you know, like <laughs> shit like that. And, and, and it's it seeds here now. And it's like, dude, you should know better. Just even by looking at this picture, you should know that's not Chem 91. It's, it's, Little People involved. got lost yeah. in their version of Chem 91. That's like, yeah. oh. And it even oh. says Chem 91 clone only. And it's like, oh, that's fucking cookies. Like, yeah. Ah, that's an, Chem 91's an ugly fucking plant. Like, that's, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, it's, it's hard. It's hard because I get, I get there's always going to be a need for that. It's not anything I can do to make it go away, but. With this show, I've done everything I can to break down the myths, even if it ruins my reputation doing it. Even if I am the villain for doing it, I'll never stop fucking doing it. I've gotten snitched on for doing what I do, SWAT teams at my door for doing what I do, and I don't give a fuck. I will keep doing it just because someone's someone's got to do it, <laughs> you know? And I, hopefully I'm right all the time. Maybe it's just my perspective, too, because I can't always be right, but... I try to get it as right as I can before I say it. Usually if I say something negative about someone, it's someone that I've had direct interaction with and, and know enough about them to say that. Yeah. yeah. Well, but, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> it's hard these days, but uh, over at the cabana, we're all pretty friendly. And... Yeah, I'm pretty friendly over there too. I try to, I try to like keep that part. I try to keep that kind of shit to my own show and my own space. You're Granted, a whole new Matt these days, man. I, I try. Like, I try to be a little nicer. <laughs> it's I, hard. Uh, th that's the hardest part for me, too, is I try and be nicer, too, because Oki and Chris will tell you. Um, I, I mean, I, I'm a nice guy, but I'm also an asshole. So yeah, I, I can't snap I mean, out of asshole. I've seen Curb handle some negative uh, interactions on the cabana recently, and I'm reading what he says, and I'm like, I'm like, bro, this is like the Kirby that I know. This is like, this is very, you know, like. He's been very know. diplomatic, dude. He's been very diplomatic. <laughs> I'm trying. I'm real. trying to be because the, you know, Howie and D Man and Skitty, they, uh, as harsh as their rules were. They listened, they would hear you out, and yeah. uh, they would listen to if somebody wanted to talk to them about an issue or a problem, like you know, they heard it. And uh, I'm I can't fix every problem and do everything that everybody wants on the cabana, but I am trying, and yeah. Skitty is helping me, um, so he's doing pretty much all of my technical stuff. and. 
So if I have a problem, I hit Skitty up and be like, hey, man, uh, you know, somebody told me the backgrounds aren't working. They can't change their background. So yeah, tell yeah. Skitty. I don't know anything about computers. I so, still want to set you guys up a Discord so you have some sort of like uh, – I think that they can work, integrate really well to each other. The cabana man, just for like an all-time chat room versus – I got a live chat on the cabana that I want people to start utilizing. Pop up in there in the morning. Is Say, there a live up? chats on there? There's a live chat on the cabana. I'm trying to make it so we don't have to go to an external website. That, I mean that is the it, idea, it, right? That's yeah, the yeah, idea. Yeah. So – that's my hold up on the store right now is um, I'm having an issue with credit card payment processors. That's going to be your hardest. Um, it's such so, a pain in the ass. But well, one of the things is Visa has sent out some major, major, or made major issues. Like even if you can get a credit card processor, Visa has hit two of the major seed banks with $250,000 fines per transaction that they find people Holy using – visa to buy cannabis seeds so even if yeah. the processor lets you run through and do it visa will come after your ass and come after you for 250k per transaction so it's kind of things, terrifying little tips of the trades that i've been gathering from so many people who vend their own seeds on their own website so i've been talking to everybody and uh i used to be the king of it bro like for for 15 you, years, I was the only one doing it. I was going to say, you, you were the first one who always had your own site. And, yeah, uh, yeah. I had to. I Everybody know. hated my ass. <laughs> but, you man, know? that's the you probably did better than everybody else because man, did you didn't good. have any middleman. So even if you did half the volume, you're making the same amount of money because you're doing it all yourself. So I had I one love- credit card company that worked with me for seven years, and it was amazing. And I made the mistake of telling one person that I thought I trusted who I used. And then they fucked me over and then turned me into the credit card company. And I lost what it. The fuck? And That's ever the... since then, nothing. <coughs> and, and I started to go back to look into using them. And then, you know, a few of the big, big seed banks got hit by Visa. And I was like, there is no fucking way I wouldn't blow my brains out after getting a $250,000 fine. That would be oh, it. That would be you awful. Know? Yeah, so until 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 major banks are willing to work with it, I would be very very hesitant to do that. There's Bitcoin, there's other things that you can use in the meantime yeah. and get around it before uh, we get involved with Visa because they are a nightmare right now and they are literally chasing cannabis seed sales specifically. They have yeah. someone on that twenty four seven. So funny how like you know they do the farm bill and they say it's legal and right? everybody kind of starts, you know, you see it really open up and Get you know comfy. bank banks are popping up and now people are you know you got clones going every which way, yep. and um, but then they still don't you know they're mad uh-huh. about the money still it's like, Not until they can find a way to fully get their hands on that fucking money that's when it starts yeah and. Uh, I mean, that's not good for us, but no. uh, it's no. we got a we got a mint like a cabana crypto token that we can use for buying and selling seeds. You know, uh, you know, back in turn. the day, Sandy I want to do bet. like a bean for bean trading thing. Like, let's get a thread up there where it's like, man, I got this pack of beans. What you got? Yeah, dude. Uh, that, I mean, bring it back to the days, bro. <laughs> trading I love it. Trade's yeah. where it's at. Trade up. Trade for what you want. Someone else gets what they want. I see That's you got cards, at. everything. You know about trading? Oh, yeah, dude. I, yeah, I I, I want to do a UFC card thing on there, too. Get some people into UFC cards, bro. Yeah. You know? I, and, and, like, the weed card. You see those weed cards that I got? I do. And I there's a couple of breeders, like, small guys on uh, – the cabana and the breeders forum. And if you're a breeder, man, start a thread in the breeders forum. Show us what you got. But there's some, there's a couple of guys over there who are selling packs that come with like a pack of weed cards. Yeah, dude. I think it's a great idea, dude. I love the collectible aspect of that, man. And uh, it, because you know what these days, man, so many of these people, and I'm not hating on seed collectors because I'm a huge seed collector. I got a ton that, I'm not going to pop, 
But a lot yeah. of these guys just collect seeds and they want like baseball the one, cards. Like yeah. baseball cards. And they want the ones with the dopest packaging with the you know, the limited run something or yeah. you know, whatever it is. And they want that. And I'm not faulting them for it. No, no. I appreciate it, man. If they're buying my seeds, I, I appreciate, appreciate it them. too. I appreciate the effort. I hope the genetics match the the packaging. Um, exactly. <laughs> you know what I mean? Packaging. Did you see though, that that big fucking uncut sheet of cards from the inline 1994 series? Like a lot of people don't know those things existed. The Mel Frank, Rob Clark, they took all those pictures in the 70s and 80s of Panama Red, Silver Pearl. All that, and they're in this old. It's called the Inline Hemp series cards. And my homie went to a storage space of some dude and picked up the uncut fucking sheets, which in in the card collecting world, that is rare as fuck to get an uncut sheet. And he picked up like twenty of them. So I'm gonna be handing those out to some of the homies, you know, probably That's worth dope. a few grand. But yeah, fuck it. Those yeah. are awesome to yeah, have dude. stuff like that, man. My yeah. buddy Bobby O gave me a bunch of old, old seed catalogs, man. And, oh, really? Uh, which ones? Oh, man, I just moved, and I don't know where they're at. You're gonna but dig them up, and I want pictures of all of them in case they're ones I don't have. I'll post them up in. Up. I'll post them up in your threads. That please you do, please on, do. Uh, in your forum over there, because there's some cool stuff in it, and just the history and seeing where we were to where we're at in the genetics game. It's it, it, it's also it's, so important of learning about what's in your current day genetics. Those catalogs yeah. have opened up a world for me. Absolute yeah. world of understanding what I'm working with, what I'm seeing. Yeah. Uh, Neville did a great job of describing and documenting his stuff. So like, you know, like on, on, uh, on our breeder syndicate uh, discord, I have all those catalogs up for everyone to see, you know, the joins. And uh, and I, I put them up for free on the cabana as well because I think it's important to share that so we're on it, even playing field so that there's no you know information being secret squirreled away, everything like that should be seen so we can all learn. It's not all bullshit we're looking at. It's 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 facts. You know what yeah. I mean? As close as we can get to facts. Yeah, man. And uh, back in the day, they actually. They wanted to tell you what's in it. And these days, yeah. like, I'm so skeptical of when people even say, you know, oh, this is runts or lemon cherry gelato or something. Oh, it's yeah, like, yeah. Man, like, what cut are you doing this with? You know what I mean? I mean, the so fact I'm is, all, all gelato looks the fucking same, bro. So, like, you could pass off whatever is whatever. The dead and, end breeding section. You know, there's so many gelato crosses and S ones. It's like, do you are you really rocking this to G thirty three or G you know gelato forty one or, or what is this really crossed to? And I think is this some crappy? I think comp there's a fair comp? majority of the market out there where it's like they have a nice cut of something. Yeah, um, it, I'm, it, it might be great. I'm not faulting them, but is it really sure. the same? Same I mean, thing. and that's the thing. They know most of the market won't know anyway. So what the fuck do they care? It's a shortcut. Yeah. Yeah. Collecting is it's a, it's a thing in itself that takes time. You have to um, make relationships, earn trust from people to get some of these rare old cuts. And uh, a lot of these guys just don't get that because they didn't have the forum experience, which is why I like, I, I impress so hard on some of this next generation you have a chance to be to learn what we went through during our era by joining the cabana and interacting there. You get some of that forum experience. You get to learn some of the the ins and outs, the do's and don'ts, what stepping on toes really means. Like it's all there to be learned. Like learn it, learn the culture, keep the culture alive for us, you know? And you got to respect the clone or, or the seed yeah. or whatever, because you'll see real quick, like on the cabana, like news, we might not have that much traffic, but news spreads like wildfire. So if you did, Absolutely. you know, something to somebody or, you know, they're not, you'll be on the do not, do not send yeah. clone list real fast. The old blacklist. Yeah, yeah. That's for damn sure. That's for damn you know, sure. So, it's pretty yeah. easy to get on the we'll help you out list 
and it's even easier to get on the we don't fuck with you list. So because as much as as much as the industry and the community's grown, it's still a pretty small club, right? And everyone kind of still knows everybody. You know, there's not a lot of like young crews that are really like making motion on their own that aren't, you know, falling on the back, standing on the the, the backs of giants, so to speak, oh, yeah. right? So like we're all still connected. Like we're just sitting here trading stories. Like we were all bumping elbows ten years ago, and you yeah, know, right? Like you know, and here we are. So uh, it's and if you're still in it now and plan on being in it for the next ten years, you're gonna you know you're gonna bump into people. I mean. I've always yes. said that, like you can't, you can't burn bridges in this industry because it comes back around real easy. And some some people are just here to make a quick buck, I guess, and get out. But that's I don't think that's any of us here. So yeah. you know, yeah. we're like lifers. This many years, After this many years of running, yeah. this shit, you know, you know that the we we've all got issues with being obsessed with this shit. Yeah for sure had dreams about it like close your eyes and that's what you see and that's what you you know yeah. eat, eat live sleep whatever all of it yeah. yeah collect it i've like i mean i got this old original i don't think you can see here but it's the old original haze cosmic boogie poster probably spent fucking way more than i'd ever care to admit on that motherfucker but it's because i live dream sleep strains you know the marketing, the history, the culture, and I know all you guys do too. What's the most you ever spent on a pack of seeds? Probably a few grand. <laughs> like realistically on some old uh what would it have been? Cali Mist, I think. Yeah. yeah. Oh wow. Yeah, a few grand. When when seed money was good. It ain't good yeah. no more. I don't really care though. I used to man. I, I was a sni- I was the sniper on Seed Bay, so yeah. Like, what was I, the most was you a, ever spent? What was it? It was, it was a few grand. On what? Uh, I think it was uh, a Res Sour Diesel of some kind. Yeah, you know, because yeah. he'd always do limited drops and then yeah. auctions and all of that. And when I first got into seeds, like buying seeds. Res was like, you know, he was the, new, the new generation kind of yeah. like top dog at the time. Yeah. And, uh, and his gear was fire. Like, you know, yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's the one I'm, on, I'm on some anti res shit. So no questions there, but his gear was fire back in the day. So I'm yeah. Really yeah. Glad. I mean, he was using legitimate shit, using the real chem D, using real sour to do what he was doing. Yeah. There's no way it wasn't ahead of its time. It really was. I just wish he was a lot nicer and you know what I mean? Yeah. It is what it is. I still don't like Swerve worse, so it's all right. Yeah. There's uh <laughs> they were both on the cabana. It was funny, Rez uh actually hit me up he's like about forums and he's like how do you get a forum on there uh, you know i was just like yeah i just picked the homies and everything yeah he's not gonna have a forum don't worry yeah i mean like you know what like i, I you know I, I don't have any hate towards the guy he's he's been cordial to me it's just uh the snitch thing for me after being not even after being snitched i've never like snitched but like after dealing with what i dealt with the past two years uh, getting attacked by you know his was people. such a big deal at the time though like yeah, dude it was bad it, uh it scared a lot of people um, it did it did i, I remember deleting back. all of my pictures on ic mag and everything dude, yeah like, it affected everyone yeah for Sca- sure it had a Delete pack all of the evidence <laughs> like um but he did it sour d ibl and that was his contribution to the industry and i feel yeah. like like i remember going through packs and packs when he did his chem d ibl and i yeah. and i had all the chem cuts you know and i was like these are all just like leafy hindu his plants. bx2 like, was way better than the ibl yeah. so, the IBL was trash. i still have some yeah. when, when he when he worked with the chem i didn't think he did anything amazing with it you know yeah. like i think I think uh, JJ had the chem uh, in a much better place back then than than Res did, but 
but Rez got lucky with the sour and, and was able to, you know, get that in a pretty good representation in seed form. And, and that was his, his contribution to the scene. And then when he went down, he did everybody dirty and, you know, that showed his true colors. He was just never nice to begin with, dude. He was always a fucking dick. So it was like... Oh, was always like, a dick, man. I, I would spend so much money like on that, Steve's though. and try and ask a question and like get ignored for months and then get like oh, yeah. a two-word reply of like, no. Or, you I know, think, like, I think yeah. he had a lot of troll accounts back then. Yeah, sure. and he was... He got high and lonesome removed from uh, IC Mag for a little bit, so I'll never forget that shit either. That's my boy, you know? That's my boy, and he was trying to get to the bottom of the chem story before anybody else was. He started the chem 101 thread, if you guys remember that. I do. On IC Mag? Yeah. 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 I do and that pissed that a lot of people off, him trying to get to the bottom of that story, because nothing was making fucking sense. Yeah. You know? And now we know a lot more than we did then, and Still pissing people off with that info. It's <laughs> funny. Some people will never give up and they'll always have their own versions of stuff. But yeah. I go with uh, what makes the most sense to me. Yeah, I, you know, I, I, you so. know like after after being able to S one a lot of these plants, go through their populations, seeing what lies in them, outcrossing them, seeing what you're getting in the outcrosses, tells the real story of what's in these plants and just knowing other lines and being able to see what was in their room, get a good idea, run those lines, crossing it. You'll find out chem 91 is the pure one. Chem cis, the original chem cis, not chem a, which was the second chem cis. The original chem cis was probably a sister of chem 91. Everything else is a hybrid or a hybrid of a hybrid. Uh, when, when you get to the chem one through four, which is like an NL5 haze chem 91, uh, uh, the chem D would be like a chem 91 mass super scout. Things like that became very true and, and easy to see after some time. And, and they don't like those stories. Those are not stories that help their situations, even though like they, they were in their teens. Like I get why they would say what they did and did what they did. And like, no blame there. I love uh, Chem Dog Greg. I love that dude. He's always been so cool to me. But like, you know, plants don't lie. People do. <laughs> That's how it's always turned out. Sometimes people are just ignorant too, and they not ignorant, just you know, unconsciously get ignorant wrong. to what. Yeah. yeah, you know. Yeah, they can get and it wrong. especially Actually, when you get a plant, and it's not like you get a piece of paper with a, you know. A car a pedigree. on this thing, you know. Yeah, exactly. I mean? so, yeah, it's uh, I mean, you got to take it. You got to take it for what it is and what you can make off of it, and then see what happens with it. At one point, Chem Dog said, "Anything that comes from me is Chem Dog," and that was one of the first telling things, you know. And then certainly, as as over the years, as people started getting different Chem D clones that came directly from him and comparing them, and we all find out, fuck, there's like nine Chem D. They're all kind of similar, but not. That's when things like really started hitting the fan, and it and it became very obvious something different had happened. But yeah, Chem D is so recognizable. You know, if you've grown That's it, like you can spot it immediately. Yeah, yeah. Yep. yeah. I feel like we had the real Chem D back in the day, and that yeah. was probably that was probably all uh, you know hops latent also before we knew what it was. <laughs> right all yeah uh, all that high maintenance like need for the plant you know so oh my god yes uh, i mean I, I i last time i talked to canarado he was still growing all the same chem cuts that i passed him you know that was like years ago on the forum with him like he was just a tent grower before he was a breeder oh yeah and yeah he, and he just was just begging for like a legit chem cut. And I remember people just like, Oh, you're just a tent grower. And I felt bad for him. And, you know, I had this warehouse and, and, you know, and yeah. I was like, I was like, dude, you're right down the street from me. Like I'll just meet you at this gas station. I tossed him the 91, the four and the D, you know, and, and I think he's just the, still the same cuts he has till this day. So if his are legit, mine were legit. Yeah. So that was, that was the cuts we all had from the crew that all was like, from Howie, from the Cabana, everybody that was on the on the Cabana then had those same. Are you still rocking yeah. them? So uh, is Canarado still rocking them? I'm not. I'm are not you? sure. Are you? I'm not. 
I'm 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 no grow right now, unfortunately. Oh, I'll get man. back there. You'll get back there. Anything we can ever do, just let me know too. Anything. So, for sure, we'll we'll jump. I'll I'll be jumping back on it. I got a couple things in the works for the next year. Awesome. So, but like I said, I've been you know stuck in the in the corporate matrix of cannabis for the last yeah, couple of years, and it's been uh it's been you know just a different perspective. So it's like it's nice to have these conversations about the old days and like still know that there's people that care about not just the history, but genetics themselves about the plant, the quality, you know, like, cause it's just, that's the piece that's really missing, you know, it really like, is. everything can't just be sales and marketing. Like there's no substance to that. Yeah. We're losing a piece of that, you know? So I think the, the pendulum will swing in the industry the other way in a couple of years, but you got a whole new generation of, of young smokers, consumers that, you know, they don't know. So they have to be educated, you know, and they, they don't know what's possible. So I forgot who was it just posted it like on blacklist or something on, on Instagram, like in the last couple of weeks. And someone in the comments was like, Oh, all weed came from cookies. And I was like, and then people were making memes about it. Like, Oh, we came from cookie. Like, oh, you Jesus. know, like, <laughs> you know, but that's, that's because that's where the information, there's no good data, like neutral information that's out there. The only thing there is is places like the cabana because everything else has a marketing spin and agenda to oh, sell yeah. something, Agendas you know? Hard so, hard. yeah. Yeah. And that's like, there's a lack of purity. That was what was beautiful about those old days. It's like, we were all just excited, like to just have it and be there. And you know what I mean? It wasn't. And what some people don't realize about the cabana is it was invite only. Like somebody had to invite you. You had to get approved. So it really like limited, like the stock of people that we had were already top tier you know yeah. and the you know all these breeders that we talk about and stuff they were all members of the cabana um at some point you know they yeah, yeah. they got invited they got approved they were on there for you know and However they were part of the special <laughs> community because it was special yeah. to be part of something that you know, anybody could be on IC Mag. Not everybody could be on the command. Exactly. exactly. And, uh, Most of them didn't even know command existed, to be honest. It was invisible. You could Google yeah. it and nothing would come up unless you typed yep. in the exact web know, address. Yeah. The exact web address up there. You would never find it. Yep. And that was by design. Yeah. And it's been it's been crazy it's doing it. The yeah. yeah, it's been it's been crazy trying to adjust to the new modern times and try and make the cabana um, feel that way, like it's still kind of exclusive but open to the public. And uh, that's that's been the hardest part. But it, uh, I think people are coming together. We have more visitors averaging online every day now so we're any given time there's you know close to 100 visitors on online now that's awesome and uh those are small numbers when you think about you know thc farmer and ic mag but they've been open 20 years to the public quality over and, quantity uh, brother quality over quantity I'll quality over it. quantity and uh, always so come come over to the cabana i want everybody to register we need people to register. That's get the driving force. Start commenting. Get some threads up there. And the website uh, scrolling across the bottom here again. So there should be no confusion about how to get there. There's no fucking excuse, fellas and ladies. More yeah, ladies yeah. would be nice, you know. Or and boom, if we got ideas to do anything, you know, you guys got an idea for the forums. Send me a DM. Store, I think. The, the seed store is going to be the most vital thing because we've I talked agree. about it, you know, having something that's free of all this marketing and hype bullshit, something that's like a neutral territory for people to buy, sell, trade genetics, like is huge because I mean, even Matt said it, like there's no real 
domestic seed vendors that are even doing it right because everything is just pumping hype and marketing so if you just have All like agenda. this this neutral playing ground you know it, and in addition to that a space where we can have open discourse and discussion about it but but um just the neutral you know marketplace of of, of seeds where you know any breeder can go up there and just list it but you're not you're not getting extra hype over anybody else because you're paying more because like every breeder is just on that even playing field and it's about the genetics. And like, it's amazing that we're in 2024 and we still don't have an online seed vendor that exists that, that can do that. I really truly believe there needs to be some vetting too. I really do. Like there's going to be people of course that don't have big followings <laughs> that should be on there because we know that they've been making seeds forever and are good people. But there are just so many shit bags that will sign up that are just going to exploit it. You know, that's that's well, the hard part. That's what the forum is for. So complete, complete grow log. Let's you grow this out. Let's see it. I, you know, yeah. if you're somebody that we've never heard of that can't show and prove anything, of course, you're not going to be a vendor on there. Luckily, we got enough vendors that can show and prove that have been doing yeah, this yeah. a long time that are trustworthy that i i got no problem making people wait until they can until they can right. show and prove you know what i mean and i'm not saying no to anybody process. but you gotta you gotta go through the process and prove yourself yeah. and then boom you can do it you know and you so, know most scammers won't go through the process of doing that in the first place so it kind of weeds them out pretty fast exactly so there will be some work. You want to you want to be able to offer seeds on there. It will be some work, but that's through the actual store. I want people to know that on the cabana right now, just as the general community, it's an open market. You're welcome to talk to people, and if they have things that you're interested in, and they're willing I can sell to sell pictures of my feet, you know, just get it out there. <laughs> and I don't know, I'm sure that there's a couple of people on there that might be into that. So yeah, you never I know. So. God, what kind so. of market you might find. <laughs> but yeah, man, trade some seeds, man. Get, uh, you know, let's get some garden picks up there. Let people know what you got. I want, uh, it's just always been a community of sharing, man. So yeah. I want people to know that it's, you know, boom, share, get on there. All right, post you some, guys. Post, well post some beans. We actually got a, a long ass episode, which is fucking perfect. I'm probably gonna cut it into two, but I want to see any of you. Let's start with Oki. Give me some last shout outs, some things you want to get out there. Any certain ideas you want to come across, or you, that you want to get across overall from this episode? Um, I don't know. I mean, I'm just uh, happy to be invited here and uh, show some support for for Curb and uh, the Cabana and. Uh, you know, like uh, like Herb had said, the uh, the can of Cabana times and the barbecue days were really like probably one of the the most fun and special times of my life. And uh, you know, I uh, I hope that uh, Curb has uh, success in bringing that to a you know a new generation and a, a much wider uh, you know mass of people. Yeah, I'll dude. have to. I'll have to give Oki some promo because I don't think he's going to do it for himself, but uh, go to his Instagram, Borneo Bud, Borneo Bud Brian, and uh, check out this facility that he just built down in Mississippi. It's Bobby state Lincoln. of the art. It's absolutely amazing. He's got, uh, he's doing pheno hunts of different seeds all the time. He's got some great genetics and they're crushing it. They're the they're the number one brand down in Mississippi right now. So definitely check them out. Send me an address, Oki, on on the cabana. Send me an address to send you some shit. Yeah, for sure. Appreciate it. Me too. All right, Chris, what you got? Um, man, this is uh, we got to cover a lot of bases. I feel like I got to say a lot of things I wanted to say. You know, little things. I was just at Canacon in Oklahoma City last week, and a lot of people came out that were homies and there's still there's still community out there and i still oh, yeah. feel blessed to be in this industry even though it's morphed and changed that i got in almost every legal state i got people that i consider you know good friends that come out that um 
you know, so there's still a lot of like, like positivity. Here. I mean, we, we all kind of went down a little bit of a negative wormhole about different things. And there's a lot of things that suck, but we're calling them out. But overall, I just, you know, want, want to end it on a positive note and say that, that it's still a, a beautiful time to be alive and be doing this and then and be talking about a plant that gets us high, you know, and, and be making a living off of this. So, so let me just say that, um, of course, I got to say thank you to, to Hort Grow. You know, if you guys need cocoa, like I said, cleanest, best quality cocoa, we're building a whole no story around that. Um, I got some other things in the pipeline coming soon, possibly a, a nutrient line that I'm working on. Um, of course, supporting Kirby with the cabana, with everything, just, you know, grateful for my time in California, grateful for my time in Colorado, grateful for my time even in Oklahoma. Well, and um, Bakersfield, bro. Bakersfield, uh, Arvin. Even even Bakersfield, Arvin, <laughs> it has to be like, like, like there's so many places that I feel at home at, you know, that, that cannabis that this plant has brought me to, like, I, you know, I've, I've been around the world to, to four continents, thanks to cannabis, you know, like literally, That's you amazing. know, Colombia, Morocco, Spain, you know, Amsterdam, like, all over all four time zones of the U S. So, um, just, amazing, uh, just want to have a lot of gratitude for that. And I still think there's a lot of future um, for people that are, are really focused on, on quality and working with good people and being a good person. I don't think you have to sell your soul to make a living in this business. I just no, think it's just, it's just the trend right now. You know, I'll say this about Chris is uh, he's the guy I always call when I got a question, bro. And, uh, and I'm going to give did, you way too technical of an answer. And I tell him every time I'm like, dumb it down for me, bro. Talk to me <laughs> like I'm stupid. And he, he knows how to explain it to me because he, he, he will give you the by the book answer on something. And uh, I appreciate being able to call him. He can take your um, nutrient lines and reverse engineer them, help you with dry salt formulas. He did great things uh, for me out in Oklahoma. I think he helped Oki down in Mississippi as well with uh, some dry salt stuff. So anybody nice. who's got questions with that, hit him up. And he's got yeah, get, get, get people off Athena. That's what that's my mission. Yeah, dude, <laughs> yeah, for sure, for sure. Way cheaper, same results. It's all essentially the same thing, man. He can uh, he can get you guys dialed in, and um, he's got a. A help desk for Hort Grow on the Cabana. So if you got any questions, uh, you can hit him up on the Cabana, uh, right on his forum. Post your questions. Get a you know a little public conversation going about it. And you got the Hort Grow discount for the Cabana. Um, That's awesome. Uh, up there. So go to their forum. You can get the Cabana code. Get fifteen percent off a Hort Grow order. Beautiful. Yeah. What about you, Kirby? Man, I, I appreciate the opportunity to win Skitty and I kind of tossed it out to D-Man or uh, Optimus a couple of times about, you know, man, let me do something with the Cabana and try something. And just uh, the right time came and they gave me the opportunity to do it. And I, I appreciate them so much, man, because I know it meant a lot to – all three of them, and it was a big Their deal baby. to yeah. let me do something totally different with it. And I talk to Howie all the time. I talk to D Man all the time. He helps me on a uh, regular basis with uh, everything site related. Um, yeah. And Skitty does all the technical stuff for me, man. And so it's been great to. I talk to them on a way more frequent regular basis now since taking over the cabana than I had for a couple of years there. And yeah. it's been nice just to have regular communication with those guys and for them to trust me to do this. It's great that I got so many homies that want to be involved that I've met over the years. And even though it's slow, everybody's still involved and in pushing for it. And we just need to get it popping. And I think we can have something that's, super cool and unique different than instagram and different than uh Look, the other sites you know be kind yeah. of a little more modernized and yeah i want you know 
cool kids again. Yeah. So everybody register. That's the biggest thing. Let's get these registrations up. And I appreciate all the support from everybody, man. And I hope people take advantages of the new things that they can do on the cabana and yes. the history that's there. And let's make some new history, post some new stuff. There's a whole new generation of strains and clones and information that's underrepresented. Um, so let's get some new information up there from everybody, you know, and it's super easy too. you can take your posts from Instagram and just copy the link and put them in your post um, uh, in the cabana. So in the reply thread, just copy the link from Instagram, put it in there and boom, it'll put that picture right there. It's super easy to oh, upload nice. pictures. Um Everything should be a lot more user friendly with the new platform. So hopefully people are figuring out any questions, holler at me, D man, somebody will help you out. And again, I appreciate the support from everybody, Matt, for having us on here, doing multiple My episodes, pleasure, listen to us jabber about stuff that <laughs> I thought only me and Chris and Oki cared about, you know? You know what's funny, dude, in doing the syndicate, when I first started doing this, like it was an Instagram live feed, right? And there would be like 20 people in there listening to me yap about genetics. And slowly but surely ended up being, you know, 300, 400 people watching live. And and at no time did I think it would ever surpass that. And usually it was just people trying to egg me on to talk shit about someone, right? And as I brought it onto YouTube and realized now we've got this discord of 500 people. And they're all super interested in genetics. A lot of them from the next generation. And it's given me a lot of hope because I didn't have a lot of hope for any of it. And it just goes to show like you put in the work, it'll fucking happen. If you stick with it, you put in the work, it'll happen. And we can all make a big fucking change with what's coming. We can re re reignite this culture together. And I, I tell I'm, you, that's been the I'm hardest missing. thing for me. Cause I'm actually like, I mentioned it before, like I'm a natural hater, but I'm really trying to embrace the the new generation, man. Yeah. I got to give them a lot more credit than I do. Sometimes I'd naturally want to hate on some of these guys, but then sometimes I see what they're doing and I'm, I'm you know, I'm impressed. Yeah. So um, never forget that you can learn something from the young guys, man. Yeah, dude. You know? I'm learning they're, all the time. A prime example of it. I know we're – going super long here but a prime example That's of fine. learning from the young guys big willie man out in norcal willie's garden and greenhouse yeah like he's, he's a young kid i've known him for forever and he grinds harder than anybody he works non-stop he's always like i love that like grinding hard and he's learning new tech and he, he's taught me a ton of stuff over the years man so always listen to the young guys man yeah we got a good crew of young ones in, in our close circle too that it blows my mind that there are young guys that give a fuck about this stuff. And, and like I said, it gives me a lot of hope. And I think uh, even this episode, people fucking loved the last episode. They're going to love this episode. And the more, more often we do this, the more we integrate, the more, the more change we can make together guys. And I want to see that seed site pop up. Cause I think that'll be a big difference too. Absolutely. For sure. I appreciate you guys for carrying that fucking torch, uh, keeping the forums alive. It's important to all of us that were there. And I think it's important to share the culture with the younger guys who weren't and give them an opportunity to be a part of what we had. And let's make it our own again. Instagram's not our friend. You no, know? it's fucking so, not. Not at all. Not. I, I know it's easy and it's accessible uh, and that's what everybody does, but man, it's a dying medium and, and your shit can be gone overnight. And, exactly. and all of a sudden you're not connected to anyone. This is you how know, shout out even man, your man. Shit. someone else's. Yeah. As soon as yeah. you post it, it's not yours anymore. Exactly. Exactly. So come on over to the cabana, man, Matt, I appreciate you having us uh, anytime, man. I appreciate you, bro. Yeah, dude, I appreciate all you guys. It's a pleasure talking to all you guys face to face. And uh, let's do this again soon, too, even if it's just a fucking round table shooting the shit about where we think uh, the culture's going. You know, anything, topical news, let's do it. Let's fucking do totally. it. All right, totally fellas. Not. And with that, salute you guys. 
We'll be back again next week, and uh, hopefully we can get some of these fellas on again very soon. Thanks for being us All right, cool. thank you. I just wanted to take a quick moment and thank everyone for showing up. Again, Kirby and all the homies from, from the cabana. Um, they're always amazing episodes. These guys are real passionate, true seed collectors. And what they're doing at the cabana, we're really supportive of. Again, decanacabana.com is where you go to sign up. Um, you can also go to riotseeds.com again to pick up our blueberry and cross stuff. There's there's multiple hybrids of the blueberry and cross. Also, for 420, which we're going to announce on 418, we got the High and Lonesome's new mango haze drop. And we finally have Matt Elite's uh, different Chem D I-95 hybrids. I am so stoked. Been working on it for years. They are, in my opinion, the best Chem 91 regular seeds where you can reliably pick out like amplified Chem 91 Terps, along with a bunch of really true breeding, true OG Kush seed lines and regular lines. So you can make your own OG Kush seed lines with the males from this stuff. Um, Matt Elite stuff is above and beyond. It's why I've hounded him for years. There's only going to be a few packs available of each. He wants to... He doesn't think there's going to be a lot of interest because he's missed the seed market the last, I don't know, four or five years. I know you'll love it. So please go check that out at riotseeds.com. We also have Riot Seeds Seed Co. Europe. We have Girt by Seeds in Australia. And then, of course, Lifted Seeds in California. Um, takes credit card processing. Great guy. Carries Can Illuminati members. Couldn't recommend him highly enough. Um we're going to try to get the blueberry in cross out to Australia, um, possibly Europe, depending on, you know, how everything works out. Maybe Brazil. The Brazil drop is coming very soon. Very, very soon. We're going to have a bunch of our fem stuff over there. And uh, yeah, don't forget, we have the Jesel fem stuff on the site. There's multiple different Jesel crosses. Some of the skunkiest stuff you're going to find. Um, we also have stuff from Sub Rob under Seed Trip in the fem section. We have his skank dog and the SSSDH, which is his 98 Super Silver Haze Cross 2 Sour Dub. Sour Dub is a dank fucking clone. If you miss it, you miss it. It's all there is. Again, I always say this. I can't reiterate it enough. When things sell out, people will ask me where it's at. They finally get into it with their Johnny Come Lately's and it's gone. You have to go to other people's seed collections and pay a premium. So go get it now. And if you're a member of our Patreon, you get an automatic 30% off on all the Blueberry Incross stuff that I'm doing. And uh, yeah, we also have um, Goat Farm's new drop with some of his Blue Dream crosses, which are also available for 30% off if you're a part of our Patreon. So please go check that out. Join our Patreon. Um, this weekend's UFC 300, and we're all watching it. So be there or be square. And with that, thanks for coming to the show. Thanks for watching it. The Cabana is really important to me. It's important to CSI. We want everyone to be a part of it. We want everyone to use it. And uh, yeah, we plan on it being our sister website and, and accomplishing the goals that we have set. Um, we can only do this as a community, and it's a great community there. With that, lots of love, and we'll see you next week for part two. Want to sit at the table with the syndicate? Check out our Patreon in our link tree or description below. Our merch site is officially live. We have all sorts of shirts, hoodies, and goodies to sort you out, and shipping is super fast, and most importantly, the quality is top-notch. I've been saving old designs for years for this purpose, so please check it out, syndicategear.com. We also have an underground syndicate discord where we get together and solve old strain history together daily. It's an amazing community of learning away from IG, and it's an amazing resource for old catalogs and knowledge. We hope you join our union of breeders and growers. Come check it out.